welcome to this week's piece. This is a cute little just entryway or mudroom bench. It has great storage, had quite a few really deep scratches in the top, which I thought was interesting. Initially, I thought the top was composite, but it wasn't. Um, the drawer, composite, and just like a laminated sheet on the bottom. Nothing too special here, but I like the shape of it. I like the amount of storage. I liked that it had that little framed out section in the center that I can put a painting in because that's what we're going to be doing this week. Um, I don't want to get too rusty at it. Uh, if you ever come across these drawers and you can't get them out, they have these little plastic latches in them. And I just wanted to show that because um, I know a lot of people don't know about them <laughs> and it's frustrating to struggle with a drawer. So this has the little latches on either side and one typically goes up and the other will go down. So this just needed some glue and I just clamped it into place just to fix the bottom section. This drawer is obviously not solid wood. I was pleasantly surprised with the top though that was solid wood. I'm um, just pine but still pretty awesome that it was. So I'm just gonna let this sit overnight and then we can get onto this. At this point in time, I wasn't sure what the top was. It had a really thick layer of the varnish over it. And I was thinking that it was probably just a veneered piece over, you know, particle board or some substance like that. But as I started going down, I was like, oh man, this is legit real wood. So you can see this really awesome figuring in that. It looks like bird's eye maple and that just in that one section there, but it's actually pine and it's just some interesting figuring that sometimes it will get, but I just thought that was really cool. Um, anyway, so now I'm going to take off the little ledges there along the top and then we can sand the entirety of the top and then we'll sand those back as well. These were just put in with a couple screws and then a couple dowels. And I just went through, dusted it all, and then cleaned it up with the chalk mountain cleaner so that I had a good surface for the glue to work to reattach the top ledges. And I need to give this center frame a base of white. I did two coats of white on this. This is the bright white and I need that to dry. So while that's drying, I'm gonna go with some white wax on the top. I wanted to leave this wood bare. I wanted it to have the really, really light look to it. Oh man, this ended up getting changed so hard. I actually loved the way that this looked. I thought it was so beautiful. But seeing it on the overall piece later, I just, it didn't go. So I'll be doing this again at another time, but man, look at that. Oh, I think it's so pretty. I'm a little disappointed that it didn't match everything when I was finished. All right, so I'm starting with the bright white, golden yellow, seas green, relic green, deep water blue, seas red, deep melon, 
dark khaki, woodland harbor, and blackboard. Wow, that's a lot. I didn't actually use all of these colors, but I knew they were colors that I wanted to kind of start with. And then I like having everything out at my disposal to have just in case. And then what I'll do is I'll take the lids off of them. I will spritz them all with water so they're not getting dried out. But that way I have them if I need them and I'm not trying to go pick up more paints because I'm not doing oil painting. I don't mix all my colors. I do mix quite a bit of colors, but if I already have them, I'm not gonna spend time mixing them. Can you guys, I'm watching Julia right now. <laughs> I, I really like it. Okay, anyway, so I gave the white base a quick sand so that I have a smoother surface. And then I'm adding another layer of white and this layer of white is just so that we have something down to mix in with the other colors. So the sky is supposed to be like a lighter sunsetty yellow. And as you can see, the golden yellow is very, very bright, but when you mix it in with the white, it really, really softens down. And I kind of like to do these swooping type images if you haven't noticed so far. <laughs> um, so that's kind of where I start. It's all like it's literally just Bob Ross telling me what to do the whole time because that guy is a genius. And then from that base of him just kind of telling you how to make trees, how to make water, how to do all that, you can fit things in wherever you want them. So I've got just a plastic lid. I use it as my palette and mix things if I need to. And then whatever brushes you can use to get the things that you want, that's the brush that you use. A lot of times he uses specific brushes that work really well for oil paints and they don't work well for the furniture paints that I use. So I have to switch things up and do what works best for my painting. And I think that just kind of goes with anything as we're learning how to do something our own way is just figuring out what works best for us specifically and then going from there. And then you guys know that you have to trust the process on almost every single one of my projects. So this looks so crazy right now and I, I totally get that, but you just keep going and everything will soften out and start to look like something. And this was the hardest part for me when I was starting this was I'm just doing this and I'm like, this just looks like blobs. I'm literally just making blobs and this is so terrible. I don't know why I'm even trying this. And then you just stick with it and keep going. And by the end you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is something. So I hope you're keeping that in mind if you're watching this to try and learn how to paint or do this. You just have to do it and then keep going until the end because that's when you're going to see the results. So basically your lightest colors go in the background. You want those to be the softest, kind of fuzziest looking things and the lightest color because there's more atmosphere between you and that object. And then as you come forward, those colors then get richer and deeper and they can be a little bit stronger and less fuzzy looking, if that makes sense. So again, I know this looks absolutely crazy, but you just have to think of it as being layers and layers of things that are just far, far, far away. And this is one of my favorite brushes for this style of painting. It is the Bob Ross two inch brush. Um, until I can find something that feels the same and works the same, I'm just gonna keep using this one. I'm not opposed to other kinds of brushes. This is just actually what works really well for this. Um, I have one and then what I do is I will spritz it with water and kind of clean it off on a towel that I keep on my lap and I do that with all of my brushes as I'm working. So that keeps them fairly dry but also paint free because you know that our paints dry a lot faster. They're not oil paints, they don't stay wet, they don't take weeks to dry, they dry in minutes. So if you let that paint dry in your brush you won't then be able to use it for the next step. So I just use the same brush, it works that well because I have to keep it dry and keep it moving. And then I use my palette knife to just kind of mix up colors and I wipe it off on the brush. That's what you see me do. It's nothing crazy. Um, I did use a liner brush to make those tiny little far away tree trunks in the background. I'm really not the best person to teach this yet as like I said I'm still just learning and I don't I don't really have the skills yet for that I don't think. 
but I do think it's really fun and I hope that you do try it because it's literally just blobs of paint and that's it and then it is magical so you have a dark base when you start going forward and I know that it seems crazy to put something so dark down but you need that dark so that you can see the lighter colors that go over the top of it and you can kind of see the magic happen here it's all about shadows and light so you're putting in the shadows first because they're the darkest they're what covers everything up and then you can take the light and put that over the top and it just comes to life I think this is my favorite tree because you can totally just absolutely see what happens it's just weird black blobs and then when you add in the colors it's just magical and this is where I realized for this part I couldn't continue using this brush because it was just a little too blobby if that makes sense for something so close so what I did is I went back in with the fan brush and use the fan brush to kind of add things that were a little more definitive. And the fan brush actually, I mean, it just gives you these limbs of leaves. Okay, I feel like this is all I can really teach you it's best just to kind of watch I do know that on the actual land you have to keep your brush at that angle whatever it is because that's the way that it will make the land look like real land like you can't go back and forth and up and down you have to keep your brush at the right angle the whole time you can't change that whatever angle you decide it to be it has to stay that and then the same for when you switch different sides you kind of have to keep that in mind as you're going so that's an important thing too. Again, you guys just watch a Bob Ross video. He actually knows what he's doing. Well, I'm just gonna speed this up even faster than it's been. And I hope you just like watching this come together because I think it's so cool to just watch nothing turn into something.
I'm not even gonna lie, I struggled so hard with choosing the base color and then when I had to go back to the top, I can't even tell you what stain color this is because I switched, I literally used five different stains because I wasn't happy with any of them and then I ended up on just this montage taupe color that I love now, but oh, it was hard for me at the time. So I sealed the entire piece with Chalk Mountain Satin Poly, and then we're good to go. Overall, I think that the outside color, while beautiful, I wish I would have done like a, I don't know, like a blend or something. Kind of how I did the ethereal dresser. I don't know. I think it's pretty. It's fine. But a little... A little boring without the wood frame. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Oh, hi. Taryn and Lucas here with Elegant Upgrades. And we've got our finished piece. So it has been just incredibly exciting to have you guys along in this painting journey with me as you know that I'm just kind of learning how to do this stuff and I it's just fascinating everything is so interesting and I want to say this is the fastest I've ever done one um I believe it clocked in at just over an hour so they typically take me about two ish um depending so it's just exciting to know that Things are going along and changing and progressing and all that. Now, I really love the colors on this. This was, this was hard <laughs> to figure out the outside colors and how I wanted to um, finish it off. You know what I mean? Like I started with the painting and I was excited about that, but then I was just, I was really struggling with how to finish what singular color I should do on the outside, what color I should do on the top. I can't even tell you how many stains I put on this thing because I just couldn't get it right. I didn't like the the finished color. I landed on this taupe and it is taupe. It is a multitude of colors on here to make it this. And I, I actually really, really love it. It's very interesting. Um, you know, that gray brown. Oh, I just, I think it's really cool looking. So I'm happy that it turned out okay. Um, the bottom, I think, I don't know, I think it looks a little bit plain. I really liked how I blended in some of my other ones around the edges when it doesn't get the wood frame, if you know what I mean. So that's just something to think about for next time. You guys know I'm learning and I'm just kind of sharing along with you. But anyways, let's get into the winners of last week's. If you stuck around for that one and saw I was giving away my two decoupage papers that I had extra. Um, so the winners are Miranda Miller and Rebecca Barnes. So you ladies won. Um, I will comment directly to you um, on last week's video, your comment that you left with the winning piece, and I will give you my email on that. And then you can email me directly your address so that I can get that out to you. Um, don't put your address in the comments. I will give you my email and you can just email me from there. Um, yeah, I'll get those sent out. Thank you guys so incredibly much. I, it's kind of fun doing just like these mini giveaways. So if you like them, I mean, I kind of want to keep doing them. I have a few extra things that I have lying around that I don't use because um, I have too many, if that makes sense. Um, so a few other decoupage papers, a lot of colored waxes and things like that, that I have so many of, just a plethora, um, just that I keep stocking up. So I don't know, it's fun to just, shoot you guys out a couple things too and it's easy to ship so anyways thank you thank you so much i hope you know that you can leave if you have any questions i know videos get a little um they're sped up quite a bit it's you know a week's worth of stuff into one single video that i try and keep relatively short so if you have questions or anything you i hope you know that i always answer them i respond to every single comment and i just want you to know that i will respond to you if you have any questions I really appreciate you guys so, so much. And uh, we'll see you next week. Oh, you look so sad.